Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting Gotta Get a Guinea <laughs> and I'm going to be sipping on a little wine spritzer and if you do enjoy this process, I hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and then you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, Mars black, fire red, burnt sienna, which I'll probably call rust, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, and deep yellow. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a nine inch paper plate to um, make a circle later. <laughs> Just because, you know, that's kind of an easy thing to use for a, a circle maker. And then I have a standard number two pencil to draw my circle with. <laughs> I'll draw some other stuff too, but I've got a pencil, um, just a regular pencil. And then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. And I have a number four round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you could switch those up too as well if you'd like to. And if you're painting along with me, you'll probably want a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit from me. I'll even throw in the fancy paper plate for you um, and, and all the other stuff that I'm using today. That's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be drawing a basic sketch that's gonna provide us with some large shapes that we'll be able to do our base color painting with. Um, we're not gonna be doing too much detail or anything in this step, we're just gonna be creating some shapes. I'll give you pointers as to where to start a particular mark or a shape and, and I'll guide you through how to, how to create these shapes. So we have a similar looking um, sketch by the end of it. So I'm gonna use my pencil and I'm gonna use my fancy paper plate to start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, my plate and if you don't have the same exact size, um, you could use like a cover to a lid or you could use anything or you could even go get wild and crazy and actually draw yourself a circle. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my um, paper plate maybe about two inches away from the top and I'm going to have it kind of centered. If it's a little to the left or a little to the right a bit, I'm, I'm all right with that. And then I'm just going to draw myself a circle around it. And if it's not a perfect circle, if your pencil bumps out a little bit here or there, that is all right. And then, you know, you can just get rid of that wherever you need to. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the outline of the sweatshirt. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to come in from the top left and the right, maybe about an inch and a half, make myself a bit of a marker here and a bit of a marker in through here. And then I'm coming all the way down to the bottom of my canvas. I'm going to eyeball where I would guess the center is about here. And then I'm going to go to the right of it just a little bit, maybe about an inch or so, and make myself a little bit of a marker. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the top two to the bottom one. And I'm going to do this in a fashion where my head is telling me that this cute little guinea pig is just kind of nestled in and it's going to come down and it's going to maybe buckle out a little bit just to keep the, 
the guinea pig all nice and secure in the sweatshirt um, and I want to keep a little bit of room down at the bottom so I have room to paint some of the body of the of the guinea pig so this is going to represent kind of the majority of the head and then I want a little bit of the body coming down so as I do this on the right hand side I'm going to bring it close to this circle so I'm just going to kind of come in through here and then I don't know maybe about a half of an inch or so away or a quarter of an inch away from that circle is totally fine and then just kind of bring it down almost in a straight kind of line until you come a little bit past the bottom of this circle and that's when I'm going to start to kind of kick it back in something like this and this is my goal down here but I want there to be a little bit of a gradual gap coming down and of course this is a, a piece of cloth so yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine is it can have different ripples and stuff to to it and then on this side I'm going to do pretty much the same thing but instead of being close to the circle I'm going to be close to the edge of my canvas with this outside edge so I'm going to whoops I think I just dropped a pencil or something. I'm going to um, bring this in through here and then I'm just gonna kind of swing it out and come pretty close to the edge of my canvas, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch away from the edge of my canvas. And then I'm just gonna kind of start swinging it in at about the same um, time I swung that one in. So something like this and then just bring it down and bring it in through this vicinity. So you can have them touch at the bottom. They could be a little bit far away from each other. It's all a bit of a piece of fabric. So it can be a little bit different. So now I need to make myself a couple of ears. So I'm gonna have this, um, I'm gonna have one ear over here and I'm gonna have one ear at the top because my guinea pig is looking in that direction. So I'm gonna go about, if this is my circle and this is about halfway um, in the midway of my circle. I'm going to go to the left of here to the edge and come down about an inch and that's where I'm going to start the exterior, the little bottom part of this ear. And I'm going to bring it out to just about as far as this line. It can overlap and it can be close. It doesn't have to be exactly um, exactly the same thing. I'm just going to kind of bring it up a little bit like this so there's a little bit of movement. And then at the top of this ear, I'm going to bring the tippy top of this ear to about this height in through here, but it's gonna come down into the head with a little bit of a curve like this. And then I can just kind of get these two to, to meet one another. And again, they can ride right along the edge of here. You're, they're really gonna kind of meet at some point anyways. The, the shirt is gonna hide a little bit behind that ear anyway, so they can touch if you want to. And then I'm gonna have um, an ear up in through here. So I'm gonna have the tip of this ear is gonna be pretty close to the top of my canvas and a little bit to the left of the center. So if this is about the center, I'm gonna come down maybe about a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch and go to the left about an inch. That's gonna be what I'll refer to as the, um, the little tip of the ear. But I also need to make a head in through here. So I'm going to have the ear here just as my guide. I put that little um, marker there. But before I do that, I want to round this head. So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from over here on the right hand side and give myself a gradual kind of gentle curve that's going to meet the tip of this ear back here. So something like this. This is going to represent the top of the head when we're, when we're all said and done. And now I'm going to give this little ear in through here just a little bit of a, um, a curve, kind of where those two um, met, something like that. And then this will come back in through this vicinity like that. And then all I need to do now is give myself a little bit of a separation between my shirt and my cute little guinea pig in through here. So I'm gonna gradually come down from this right side of the circle. I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit inside like that. And then I'm just gonna kind of gently just bump it out like that and close it off in through there. And that's all we're gonna be doing for our outline. We're gonna be using our, mm, we're gonna use our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this all done, you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting 
the shirt that sits behind our cute little guinea pig. So I'm gonna make mine just a gray color, but you could certainly use whatever color that you'd like. I'm going to pre-mix myself a little bit of a light gray. I'm using my large brush. I'm using white and a touch of black, and I'm just mixing it together until I get whatever shade of gray that I like. I'm going for a lighter shade, um, so that way it doesn't take away from my super cute little guinea pig. <laughs> But once I've got that, so I'm going somewhere in this vicinity, like that. And then once I've got the color that I like, I'm just going to paint in this back area with it. Um, because I'm using a light color, it, the, the brush stroke that I use isn't super important. You could use a circular brush stroke, you could use a left to right brush stroke, whatever you choose to use is totally fine because when you're using these light colors like this, you're really not going to detect that brush stroke very much, especially if you have a solid, um, a solid color that you're working with. And then I'm just gonna kind of scoot it down into this little crevice here. It's okay if you bump into your pencil marks along the way, that's totally fine because we're gonna be um, painting over it and it's, this is just a little background piece, so when we, you'll be able to see your pencil marks underneath it, so don't worry if you, if you bump into them a little bit. Um, and then once I've got it all done, what I'm gonna do, you can adjust the colors at all if you want. If you want it to be a little bit lighter in the top area, just to give it a little bit of dimension, I just picked up a touch of white. And then if you want it to be a little bit darker as it's going into that sweatshirt, you can pick up a tiny bit of black paint, which is what I just did on my dirty brush. And I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a dark area where it's going to recede into that sweatshirt. So you can really, this is a great time to practice um, doing shadows kind of on the fly without having to do too much detail to it because this is again just kind of a piece of fabric that's going to be resting behind everything else. So it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just taking a little bit of that darkness kind of going down in through those edges. And that's all I'm gonna be doing for my t-shirt. I'm gonna be using this large brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be painting the base coat for my sweatshirt. I'm gonna be using my large brush and I'm gonna be using red and black paint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make myself a custom dark red because that's gonna be the base coat that I'm gonna use for this sweatshirt. So I know that I'm gonna to wanna to use some of my vibrant red later. So I'm just gonna separate a little bit of that out. I don't need much for later. I'm gonna use utilize it as like a highlight later, but so I'm gonna separate a little bit of it out. And then what I'm gonna do with the rest of my red is I'm going to add a little tiny bit of black at a time, and I'm going to spin it around and make myself a dark red color. I know that this paint will get a little bit darker as it dries, so I'm gonna account for that. I don't wanna make it too, too dark because it will, well, for me, that's my preference. You Maybe you want your shirt or your sweatshirt really, really dark. I'm going for like a maroon kind of color. So I'm just taking a tiny bit of black at a time because black can really take over really fast. So I'm just doing a teeny tiny bit at a time. And once I get my desired shade, which this is about where I'm heading with mine, I'm gonna paint the entire sweatshirt in with this red color. So I'm gonna do, you can even paint the edges or the sides of your canvas. So just know that that's totally fine if you want your canvas to look all nice and professionally done. Painting those edges is a, is a quick, easy way to accomplish that. And I'm just bringing it all the way down. Um, unlike when we were using the lighter colors, when you use the darker colors, you will definitely see your brush stroke because these colors are gonna be more streaky um, looking when they're wet. So we are gonna be doing multiple layers on this sweatshirt. So you don't have to be terribly concerned about what brush stroke you use, but just know that it will look streaky, um, not gonna look 
100% done at this point and that's quite all right. We're just looking to get a base coat on right now so we have a good um, solid um, background for the actual sweatshirt details with all the um, the lumps and the bumps and the highlights and the shadows that we'll put that we'll be putting on later. So I'm not going for um, a perfect coat at this point. I'm just going for to fill in the the area um, with with one layer. And again, it's not going to look awesome right now. So don't don't worry if it doesn't. We're just going for a basic. Um, background color to it and you'll see too as it dries the areas that have more paint or are thicker than some areas are going to end up darker because the more paint that's on, that's on it will will make it appear to be darker so just know as it dries you're probably going to have some darker spots and some lighter spots that are not um, something that you'll want in that probably in that particular space, but we will be um, modifying it all when when we get done. I am bringing this red pretty much almost together down here at the bottom. You could even touch it in those two um, areas if you wanted to. That's where our our zipper is gonna come together at the bottom. So just know that you definitely want them to at least be pretty darn close down here. I might even make mine a little bit closer like that there we go and then we're going to use the same brush for the next step so once you've got your uneven looking coat <laughs> first coat on your uh, sweatshirt you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the base coat for the fur on the entire guinea pig so i'm going to be using my large brush and the colors that i'm going to be using are brown, rust, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna do my ears first and I'm gonna be using both brown and rust on my brush at the same time. And I'm not terribly concerned about a perfect coverage. I just want these ears to be a little bit darker than the rest of the um, animal that we're painting in. So you can use like a little dabbing type um, brush stroke, you could use a circular type brush stroke, whatever you feel um, is giving you kind of a um, a good texture without having too much brush strokes within it. So um, if I was to just do straight like this, it might not give me an even look to it. So I'm going to either kind of tap my brush or do little circles just so I have a consistent kind of texture throughout that area. So I'm reloading my brush with rust and brown, and I'm gonna go ahead and do this little ear over here. And I want it to be a little bit rough along the edge where it meets my sweatshirt. So I wanna make sure that I get into, or the shirt, I wanna make sure that I bring the color almost overlapping that area a little bit, and that there is no gap between my ear and that, um, that shirt behind it. Over here, it's okay because we're gonna have lots of fur that's gonna be fluffy, but I just wanted to make sure. Well, I guess we would there too, but you can use your best judgment. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a lighter version of brown. So guinea pigs come in every single color. They can be white, they can be black, they can be brown, they can be um, like a rusty color, they can have yellow in them, they can look blonde, they can look brunette, and they can look speckled, they can have spots, they can have long hair, they can have short hair. So you can really truly have as much fun with this as you'd like. I'm just making myself kind of a neutral tan color um, guinea pig with maybe some darker fur in the ears and maybe a little lighter on the nose, but you can, and he doesn't have super long hair, but oh my god. Some of them do have long hair, so you can you can have fun with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a medium kind of brown color. I'm going to use some of my rust, and I'm, I'm going to mix quite a bit because I know I'm going to use this color a lot. I'm going to mix brown, rust, a little bit of my yellow, and a, a little bit of my white, and just kind of mix it together. And again, I'm not shooting for anything... Um, exact. I'm really just looking for a, a lighter tan kind of color. I know that the rust or the burnt sienna can tend to make things look a little pink um, when you start to add a bit of white to it. So that's why I'm definitely 
also utilizing my yellow so that will take any pinkness out of it because um, I want to save my pink for the little nose so <laughs> I definitely am not going for um, something that is in my head too too pink of sorts so this is kind of where I'm headed with my base coat on here and again it doesn't have to be anything perfect and now I'm going to just start kind of painting it in so when I do fur I am constantly thinking about what direction that fur is growing in. Even when I'm doing these base coats, most of the time you'll see that my brush is going to be going in the direction that I feel that fur is going to be um, growing out of. I'm slowing down around the edge right here. I don't want his nose to grow too big. <laughs> um, so. I know, again, that this is just going to be our base coat for the animal, but if I started doing like these big crisscross motions or um, started doing fur going this, or started doing brush strokes, brush strokes going this way when I know the fur goes this way, it might make my future job a little bit harder. So I'm always going to be putting my the paint on in the direction I feel that that fur is going to be coming out of um, out of the face or out of the body. So right now I am just adding my brush strokes in through here going because I think that it's going to be going up the head and this is the side of the face so I feel like it's going to go in that direction and then coming out over here I feel like it's going to be coming in a downward direction. So that's the direction I'm, I'm moving my brush. I do know that I'm going to want a little bit behind this ear so I'm just going to kind of scoop a little bit back in through there. You might not even have any room um, available. Just watch out for wet red paint. Um, we are going to be doing again some some future stuff back there so this is just just getting us started. And then as you're coming along this edge, especially in through here, you can overlap that sweatshirt a little bit. Don't feel the need to just go right up to it. When we get in through here, you know, if you go over the edge of the sweatshirt a little bit, it's okay because we're we're gonna have a zipper and we're gonna have the edge to the sweatshirt, but we also are gonna have some little pieces of fur coming out. So it's okay if you if you get um, if you overlap the edge of the sweatshirt a little bit, and then I'm just coming all the way down to where I feel um, finish this entire area. If you have a little bit in through there, just pop pop it in through there bringing it on over in through here. And then we are going to be using our, let's see what we're we gonna use for the next step. We're actually gonna use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this step done, you can put this large brush away in the water cup or wherever you'd like to put it away. As I, it's so funny when, I, I, when I get down to the to the end, I'm like, oh, let's go on to the next step, but I'm not even done with this step yet. So I shouldn't even be telling you to go on to the next step until I have this step all nice and executed. But I think I'm done now. So um, you can put this large brush away wherever you'd like. Take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the edge to the sweatshirt, which will be where the zipper ends up being, but this is gonna be the base um, for that, and it's gonna be just the little, the little edge. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using that maroon color that I had plus black. So I'm in essence gonna make myself a little bit darker of a shade. So I'm gonna take some of that maroon color that I had and just add a bit of black to it. So I don't want it, again, to go all the way black, but I want it to be noticeably a little bit darker than my sweatshirt itself. So that way I can have a nice clean edge to it and I've got a good place where I'm gonna end up putting my zipper later. So I'm gonna use a good amount of paint on my brush and that way I'll have some nice long flowy brush stroke marks. So what I'm gonna do is on the right hand side at the top, I'm gonna start maybe about an inch, inch and a half down from that right hand side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swoop this over and it's gonna end up meeting this edge. I'm gonna follow this edge all the way down, all the way down and down into this crevice here. And then I'll do another one that's gonna start at the top 
it's gonna skip this whole area of the, the guinea pig body because I want it to look like the guinea pig body is kind of in front of that piece of the sweatshirt. And then I'll, I'll pick it back up down in through here. So again, I've got a really dark color on my brush and I'm gonna start maybe about an inch, inch and a half down from this right hand side. I'm gonna make mine probably about um, a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch wide, this particular line that we're creating here. Um, and if yours is skinnier or thicker than mine, that's okay. It's just, that's about the, the width that I'm doing mine. And I'm painting it right on top of my existing um, red sweatshirt or maroon sweatshirt here. So you can certainly, um, if, you, if yours goes over the edge of it a little bit, that's okay. And if your line is not super clean, that's okay. And if it's wobbly, that's okay too. <laughs> Everything's okay in painting, um, especially when you're painting cloth because cloth has so much movement to it. There's a lot of margin for error there. Um, and I'm just coming right down. If you run into some wet paint, like I felt I just stuck my hand in a little bit of um, wet paint from the regular sweatshirt, just don't worry about it because you're gonna be doing um, other layers on top of that. And then again, I'm just gonna kind of bring this right down. And if your line is wider than mine or sl more slender than mine, um, that'll just make it more uniquely yours as opposed to looking exactly like mine. And again, I'm using a lot of paint on my brush and I do know that it will get a little bit darker as um, this process goes on. I think I'm gonna close this gap a little bit in through here. I know that I'm gonna have my my zipper um, pieces treads. I don't know what those little metal pieces are that zipper links, whatever they are, those little metal pieces that we're gonna be putting on our, on our zipper to clasp them together down in through here. So I'm gonna get these pieces pretty close. And then again, I'm gonna just bring this one up to about in through here, kind of get it to disappear underneath that fur. I'll be making that fur really nice and fluffy on top of it later. And then maybe maybe just bring it up a little bit further up. But again, you can, you can customize yours whatever way you want. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little piece up and through here. And then we're gonna switch back to our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this on here, your little edge, and I just got it to disappear behind his ear in through here, you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the highlights and the shadows on our sweatshirt. So I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm using are black, I'll also be using this maroon color that we made as well as red. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with a little bit of black paint on my brush and I'm gonna put my shadows in place. So my shadows are gonna be wherever I feel that this fabric is folding over or, um, or dipping in. So I feel that this edge of my um, sweatshirt is gonna be kind of buckled out and almost like folding over a little bit, which would cast a shadow to me in through here. And I'll do the same thing over here. So I know that my I'm using a firm brush where I can m manipulate that paint as it's drying. So I'm going to be using a little bit of the black paint in through this crevice on both sides, and then I'm gonna pick up some of my maroon color to get them to blend in. So again, you don't need much paint on your brush. If you feel like you have a lot, you can just wipe it off on your paper towel. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it right up next to that um, edge of the sweatshirt that we just painted a minute ago. And I'm bringing this all the way in through here, and I'm just gonna kind of rub it out until I feel that it's almost blended in with this um, with this background color or the main color of the sweatshirt. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that maroon color without washing my brush. And that's gonna get these two to blend in with one another. So you don't need a, a lot of paint throughout this process to, to get them to blend in with one another. 
Um, if you do find that you run into some wet paint from your previous round, again, just kind of paint it on in. We'll finish painting the rest of the section in a minute, but I'm just gonna kind of get my shadows in place here. So I just picked up a little bit of new black or more black, and I'm gonna get this little shadow over here to, to, to come to life and just bringing it right down in through here. And it does not have to match the other side exactly. That's what's gonna make this sweatshirt look like it's got some good movement. I just then picked up some of that original um, maroon color. And I think I'm gonna want some shadow back in through here too, that maybe the um, little cute animal is casting upon the sweatshirt. So I'm gonna put a little bit of darkness back in through here as well. So this will be my shadow from my animal. And because I don't have much room here, I'm just gonna kind of fade this black out into the edge. And then let's see, where else do I want a little bit of a shadow? Definitely over here on the top right hand side, underneath this part of the um, sweatshirt. So this part of the sweatshirt is kind of folded over in through here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow coming down this side. And of course you can have a, um, as the shadow as far out as you want to or have it nice and close like mine is. I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel, picking up some of that original maroon color to get it to blend in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, while I still have a little bit of the black on my brush, I'm gonna start picking up some more of that original maroon color to get the black to work its way off of my brush. I'm gonna start at the bottom of my sweatshirt. So this is in essence kind of adding a little bit of shadow down towards the bottom of the sweatshirt, in essence to tell you that the light source might be coming from up top or the form of this person's body might, have, might dip in a little bit underneath um, the mid range. So I'm just getting that black to work its way off of my brush a little bit at the bottom of the um, sweatshirt. And then once I've got these areas nice and, and blended, and again, we're doing mostly a solid color on this um, particular fabric. So you don't necessarily need a distinct brush stroke direction or type of brush stroke. This is more of a, let's get the colors blended well together. And sometimes that takes a variety of different directions from your, from your brush. And so I'm just gonna kind of move my way up with this same um, maroon kind of color, making sure I have a good coverage along the sweatshirt. So this should take care of any streakiness that you might have um, had from the first round. If you want, you can still utilize a little bit of that darker area up in through here. I'm gonna have it the lightest maybe in this midsection, but I first I'm just making sure that I have a good coverage on there. And then I'm gonna make sure that I have good coverage back here. So just going in through here and we're gonna add little tips of highlights in a second. And we're gonna do that with our, just the red, red color itself. So I feel like I've got a pretty good coverage on here. Just make sure I've got just a little bit more in through here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick up just red paint. I didn't wash my brush and I'm picking up just red paint on it and I'm going for the lightest of the lights up in this top region in through here. So just making sure I've got this all the way to the edge so you don't see any more of my pencil marks. Gotta go a little slower when I'm doing it like that. <laughs> making sure I've got it all the way to the edge. I'll do the same thing up and through here, just adding a bit of that red as my highlight color. And then if you feel like you want these midsections to be even brighter to show that the, that the sweatshirt is being bumped out by the little animal or by the person's form, you can just add a bit more red paint to the, um, to the area and that will lighten it up just a little bit and that'll give you the appearance that it sticks out a little bit farther. So you can tweak this as much as you want. Um, if you're finding that you didn't get it fully covered with this one step, you can certainly dry your canvas and do an additional layer on it. But this is one of those steps that definitely the more you build it, 
the um, more softer it will look and the more you'll get those those gradients to just really appear and look super super cool and give a lot of form to it so we are going to be using let's see what are we going to use for the next step let's use our small brush for the next step so once you've got your sweatshirt done and again don't be terribly concerned about over on these little edges where it's going to meet the fur but once you've got them done you can put your large brush away wherever you'd like to take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our facial features so it's going to be the eye the nose and the mouth so I'm going to use my small brush and I'm going to be using black and brown paint. So I'm going to start with the eye and I'm going to be using black paint on my small brush. So I'm going to have my eye. These are they're pretty big eyes for such a small little little rodent here. I think they're rodents. Yeah, they're they're domestic animals, but I think they're still considered in the rodent family. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put my eye in through here. So. For me, it's the top of it is at about almost the bottom part of this um, ear and the bottom part is almost midway in the ear. So I'm gonna just do a circle and I am gonna have it, it's gonna be about an inch and a half wide by an inch and a half tall. So something like, I would say around this size. And I'm going to have mine solid color in the, in the center with the black. And then I'm going to have it softer with softer edges around the exterior. So that way when I go to get it to blend in with all of the fur that's going to be surrounding it, it'll be an easier time to do it. I'll have these nice soft edges to it. So you can add a tiny bit of water to your brush if you want to just to get these edges to be a little bit softer and not have them such firm um, edges to them and that'll that'll make it a lot easier to um, get some detail and some little fluff and fur going along the edges you can also pull down from this inside right corner if you pull down a little dark section like this this is going to give us the makings of the little crease on the inside of the eye and i love to put those little creases in there <laughs> i just think that they add so much to 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 little animals so something like that so now without washing my brush i'm just going to pick up my brown paint so that way i have a little bit of black and a little bit of brown on my brush i'm going to be putting the nose um, and the mouth in place and it's kind of like a little bunny nose with or like a little cat nose where it's almost in the shape of a V um, but they have these and again there's all different kinds of guinea pigs but I'm making mine have a little pudgy face <laughs> he's gonna be really cute so I'm gonna have the kind of the the tip of the nose is gonna be at about the same height as the bottom of my eye so if you go from the right from the bottom of your eye and just kind of travel all the way over and stop maybe about an inch inch and a half away from the edge of your canvas that'd be a great place to put the little tip of your nose and then my face is going to be turned a little bit so i'm going to see more of the left side than i am of the right side so on this um, left side i'm going to make my nostril section or area where that's going to go maybe about an inch inch and a half wide and then this one's going to be just a little bit um maybe smaller on that right hand side something like this and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring i'm just picking up brown paint i'm going to bring a gentle curved line coming down maybe about two and a half to three inches something like this and stop it right about in through there. And then this is gonna be the makings of my mouth. So this is like a little crease in, in the face and then the makings of my mouth are gonna come in through here. And this is gonna be a little bit of a curved line and I'm gonna make it a little bit 
longer than the than the nostril part of the nose and then I'll do a little bit on the other side but again I'm not going to see as much on the other side so maybe just something like that because this side will all just kind of fade off into some fur and then we're going to use our large brush for the next step so once you've got your mouth in place and your eye in place you can put your small brush away take out your large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are adding the shadows into our fur so i'm going to use my large brush and into our ears too. Um, I'm using my large brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are black, brown, the premixed color that we used here, and rust. And what I'm really looking to do is one, kind of finish the inside of my this ear and maybe um, add a little bit of um, finesse onto this ear and through here. And then I wanna start um, adding the shadows to show you the contours of this little um, this little animal so I wanted the animal to have an arm in through here so in order to make that arm appear I'm gonna have to have some shadowy fur down at the bottom I also want you to see that the animal ha comes around over here so I'm gonna have some shadowed fur back here I'm gonna have a little bit of shadowed fur in that chest and I want the face to look like it's round also, so I'm gonna have a little bit of kind of shadowed fur in through the side of the face and maybe in through this little neck area. So the best tip that I can that I can give you when doing fur is never have a lot of paint on your brush at the same at, at once. So you don't want to scoop up as much paint as you can. Just scoop up a little bit on the end of your brush, especially if you're going for a very furry looking animal, because this way you'll be able to um, make almost individual looking um, pieces of fur, especially if you're using a nice firm brush as I am. So I'm going to start with my ears because they don't, um, they're not going to take a whole lot of work. So I'm going to put just a teeny tiny bit of black paint on my brush so little just wipe it off on the side of my palette I want very little bit on there I want to get the inside part of this ear to have some shadow to it so I've just got a, a bit of that black on my brush and I also want a little bit of shadow up in through here to show that it's meeting the head a little bit so I'm just putting a bit of black paint in through there then I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel and pick up some of that rust and brown paint just a little bit to make sure that I've got this black blended in with the rest of the ear that I had in through there. And I'm not terribly concerned about the edges of the ear right now because I will be adding some little long pieces of fluffy fur on the edge of those. So just want to make sure that I've got this whole interior looking like it's fully painted. And then if you have any little finessing to do on this one, now's the time to do it. So just rust and maybe a little bit of brown if you need to. But again, there's gonna be little pieces of fur on top of that that will help to um, make it finished looking. So now I don't even need to wash my brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick up some of my brown with a little bit of that original color that we used on my brush at the same time. I'm not gonna pre-mix them, and this is gonna help me to start where I want all of these shadows. So I know definitely I'm, I'm gonna want some on this left-hand side in through here, so I'm just starting to, again, pull the, um, or paint my strokes in the direction that I feel that that fur is going in. If yours is a little bit darker, you might, I just am doing this for demonstration purposes, want to pick up a touch of black paint, especially in these little darker areas. So if yours isn't looking like it's dark enough and you're not getting enough of a um, look to it, or like you can't even see that it's darker than the, than the fur it's sitting on top of, then you can certainly pick up a tiny bit of black. And I'm starting to pull this out where it's overlapping that sweatshirt a little bit. And I'm just using the corner of my brush so you can um, detect almost the singular kind of pieces of fur. I'm gonna do a little bit on the top of the, the head in through here so it looks like these pieces are going um, off into a, a little bit of a shadowed area. 
And then I'm going to come down and start adding more of these shadowy pieces down in through here. So I think I'm going to use a little bit more of the brown as opposed to that original color, just so you can um, detect it a little bit better, especially on camera. And you can see I am not painting over my original color 100%. I definitely want that to be evident. Um, throughout this painting process. I want all of these colors to speak together and to look like they're just overlapping one another and creating this great um, soft texture for this fur. I definitely need some shadow down in through this area. So I still have just brown on my brush and whatever little remnants of black I had from up there that this is, this is gonna work as well. And just make sure that I get it right into this little crevice here and if you paint over your your sweatshirt a little bit that's okay we're gonna we still have the zipper to go we got to add that zipper in through here in a minute as well and just getting the fur to go in the direction that I feel that it would lay I have an arm that's gonna be in through here but I don't know right at this second as I'm down here how high it should go so I want to give myself a visual marker so I don't bring this shadow up too high so I'm gonna have the top of the arm somewhere in through here. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of a marker right now and do this chest shadow. So as I'm laying down the shadowed fur underneath the arm, I don't go too high because I don't want to um, overdo that shadow, um, bring it up too high. So this is gonna be my visual marker that allows me to know where that arm is. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just add a couple of pieces of the, the darker fur down at the bottom and through here. And again, it's okay if it overlaps into um, the sweatshirt a little bit. We're gonna be doing a whole bunch of little tiny fluffy pieces of hair in a little bit as well. This is just going to um, get, us, get us started. And I feel like the fur is gonna kind of fall down this arm and just kind of lay down in through here. And again, I'm considering these to be more the shadowy kind of fur pieces. And then I'm gonna pick up some of my rust color with my dirty brush. I didn't even wash it. I'm gonna have some shadows in through this area of the face. So again, I'm just gonna use a little bit of this and just give myself some um, of what's gonna be what I refer to as the shadow kind of fur on the face. And I'm leaving this area alone because I'm gonna be putting some light fur in through there. So again, I'm just kind of getting another texture in through here. I'm gonna have a little shadow in, in the, um, this little part of the neck. So I just added a bit of brown and rust to my brush in through here. So that's gonna start that. Um, I'm gonna soften this little nose area. So what I, the colors that I have on my brush right now, I'm just kind of rubbing them in on top of what I had originally. So this is just giving me a bit more dimension around that um, muzzle kind of area in through there. And then I'll do the same thing up around this ear back here. So I wanna just make sure that I have enough kind of dimension going towards the back of the head like that. And that I think is gonna do it for my shadowy kind of areas. The rest of the um, fur that we're gonna be putting on the, on the body is gonna be of a lighter sort. Maybe I'll put a little bit back here too, by the ear where the, where the head meets the ear, just to make sure that I've got this. Oh, and I'm overlapping it into the ear a little bit too. So this way we've got a couple of darker pieces behind this eye as well. That should do it. And then we're gonna switch brushes to our small brush for the next step. So once you've got some good shadowy fur on your little adorable guinea pig, you can put this uh, large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the teeth on our zipper. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using the gray color that I use for my sweatshirt, but you could use any form of gray that you'd like. Um, I am going to be making sure that I have my brush nice and pointy the whole time. If you need to, if you have thicker paint, if, you, if your paint has 
um, thick body to it, you could add a tiny bit of water to thin out your paint just so you have a really nice fluid brush stroke. Um, the line, we're gonna, we're gonna start with a, an outline around the sweatshirt, except for, this is gonna be the exterior edge of the sweatshirt, which is easy throughout here, but when you get up into this corner in through here, it kind of crosses over the piece of fabric. So I'm gonna start up here first. I'm gonna start in through this area here, and then I'm going to cross it over like that, and then just bring it on the edge of that piece of fabric, and just bring it all the way to the edge of my um, canvas. And then I'm gonna do this line all the way down the edge of my sweatshirt. So in this area, you might not see it very much because you're right next to a similar color. You'll you'll get to you'll see it a little bit more if you had a deeper shadow in through there. But that's all right. Once we put those teeth on there, it will make sense. And then I'm going to just bring it all the way in through here, and bring it all the way down into that um, where the two pieces of the sweatshirt meet. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the left side as well. And I'm doing it in this um, gray color. So when I go to add the actual teeth, this is the little piece of metal that kind of holds them together. Um, and when I go to add the teeth, I'll be able to add a little bit of a highlight to it um, to make it look a little bit more shiny, like a piece of metal. Um, so you could certainly do a flat color. You could just do it white if you wanted to, but um, I want mine to look a little shiny, which is why I'm doing this um, color that's a little bit darker than white. So now that I have that line on there, now I'm gonna make the actual teeth themselves. So these they, they kind of do this when they meet from one side to the other. So as I do this, I know that I, I want to have a space that's big enough to fit a tooth from the other side in it. And I'm going to have these teeth crossing over into the fabric and into the um, outside of the fabric. So I'm going to just make one in through here so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to do, it's going to be maybe about a half of an inch long like that. And they have to be spaced far enough apart so when the other one comes from the other side, it would fit in there. So I'm not gonna um, make, I, I'm not gonna labor over them being super duper perfect, but I am gonna try and keep that thought process and they, they're gonna come together in through here. So something like this, and you'll see, you'll see how this is gonna work in a second here. Um, so I'm doing this bottom part first, and then, you know, you could certainly make yours a little bit bigger than mine or smaller than mine. It's totally up to you. And as I go ahead and do the other side here, I got to get them to fit inside. This is the trickiest um, section in through here. Once you get past this section, you can kind of, you know, you don't have to be terribly concerned about them meeting perfectly. But, um, and again, I've, I've got a little bit of water in my paint mixture, which is allowing me to have a nice fluid brush stroke, but um, you might have thinner paint than I do, or you might, you know, just whatever, whatever you, whatever consistency works for you. And then I'm just gonna kind of cruise along, going up this entire area. I'm going in the same direction as the, um, the shirt itself. So this way they, they remain kind of curved like the piece of fabric is curving and just kind of straddling that piece of metal from the from the tooth halfway over the um the fabric and halfway over into the area that's not the fabric and then i'm just gonna oops the left hand side is going to be easier we don't have as many teeth to go through so i'm just going to kind of keep going here and you can curve them a little bit if you want them to be a little curved or if they end up being a little a little curved that's okay and then once I've got them all on here what I'm going to end up doing is I will use a touch of white paint to give them a little bit of a highlight and that's what's going to give them a more three-dimensional type of appearance when you get up into this area up into this top right this gets a little tricky because 
you're going to be seeing just the edge of these teeth as they go um, underneath this little edge of the sweatshirt. So I'm going to just start making like little dots because I think this would just be the, the edge of them. Maybe these ones stick out a little bit more as they're turning this corner. And then I'm going to do a few on the other side. Just make sure I get these pretty equally spaced apart. Yeah, that looks good to me. And then I'm going to go ahead and do some over on this side. So these ones I don't have too many on this side. So I'm just going to... And these ones will probably be disguised by some, some um, strategically placed fur. <laughs> so once I've got these ones in through here, and these ones are just going to kind of hide underneath the fur. We've got a few up and through here. And now that I've got them all on there, I am washing my brush and I'm going to use just white paint to add a tiny little highlight to them. So because I used that like a creamy gray color, I can come in and I'm just doing it on the teeth. I'm not doing it on the um, that an individual line that we the continuous line that we did. I'm just doing it a little a little bit on the teeth. And because I started with a gray base, it's allowing this little highlight to make them look a bit more three dimensional. So you didn't you don't need much sometimes to to give a um, a three dimensional appearance. Sometimes it's just this tiny little bit of a uh, contrast in colors that can do it. And you could, I suppose, if yours were a little bit too close to white, you could certainly add a little shadow conversely, and that would give you the same, the same type of effect. And then once I've got these highlights on these little teeth, then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. Let me just get, and I'm, on these ones, I'm just doing little tiny dots to give you the appearance of a little, a little metallic sparkle. And if you had fancy metallic paint, you could certainly use silver or gold to make these um, of a real metallic look. That would be a really neat accent to have to them as well. And then you can just wash and dry this little brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the zipper clasp, the thing that's gonna operate our zipper. I'm gonna use my small brush. Um, we're gonna put it in through here, so if, you're, if your canvas is not dry, you'll wanna wait a minute or just get, get that area dry. I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna use that um, gray color that we had pre-mixed and I'm also gonna use white and black. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna put the shape of the clasp in place first and then we'll add a little highlight and a little shadow and it will magically look three-dimensional by the time we're over. So I'm gonna do it just right on top of these teeth. I'm almost gonna pretend like I can't even, I, I, I'm not even seeing them. I just wanna put it in a good place um, and not be terribly concerned about what's underneath because it's just going to naturally lay on top of these teeth. So I'm going to have mine coming about up to here and I'm going to um, leave a little, a couple of the teeth down at the bottom showing. So I'm going to first start with an oval type circle shape that's going to um, end up somewhere around here. And again, I'm just kind of painting it right on top of those, those other teeth that we had created. I'm not doing it much um, wider than the, um, than the kind of stitching that we have along the edges. So it's just gonna be kind of a little circle that I can see through. I'm just gonna make it nice and, and straight there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a vertical line in the center from right about here. And I'm gonna stop it about halfway between um, the top and that circle. And then I'm gonna do two more little vertical lines. They're gonna be a little bit shorter than this one, and they're gonna end up touching the edge of my um, circle part. So I'm gonna start somewhere in through here and then just kind of bring it down 
and touch the edge. And yours can be different shape than mine. It doesn't have to be exactly the same shape as mine. So I'm going to start over here and then just bring this down in kind of a vertical way and meet the end of that um, circle in through there. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush, my small brush. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint, so a little bit of white paint, and I'm going to put some highlights. So I'm going to do a highlight on the top part of that circle. I'm going to do a little highlight on this center thing, but I'm going to give it a little bit of a curve so it looks like it's got some form to it. Then I'm going to put one on here and one on here, and then I'm going to wash and dry my um, my small brush and I'm going to add some shadows. So my shadows are just going to be with black paint and I'm really just going to kind of underline some stuff. So I'm going to put an underline underneath the bottom of this circle with black paint like that. Then I'm going to put um, an interior kind of shadow in through here like this. Then I'm going to put a couple of little shadows in between these pieces, something like this, and like this. And if you feel that you want some more shadow, I feel like I want another shadow over here on the exterior side. So I'm just bringing a little bit of black over there. And you can kind of tweak it as much as you see fit, but that's going to work for me. So we are going to be uh, we're going to use this small brush for the next step. So once you've got your um, clasp on here, you can um, wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are we're painting the eyeball. So I'm going to be using my small brush. I'm going to be using yellow, rust, black, white, and I might use a little brown too, but if I do, I'll call it out. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of yellow on my brush. And what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna have the colored part of my eye in through here. I want it to be a little bit lighter here and it's gonna fade up into the darkness over here. So I'm starting with yellow and I will always stay away from the edge of the eye, where that black area is along the edge, I wanna maintain some darkness around the edge. So as I do this, I'm gonna be a little bit away from the edge of the, um, of the black part. And if you bump into it, don't worry, you can, always, you can always modify it in a little while or bring it back if you need to. Now I'm gonna pick up a touch of my rust paint without washing my brush, and I'm gonna start um, blending it in as I'm going up the eye and you can get it to just kind of blend in a little bit. I want it to fade into the darkness over here on the right and fade into the darkness at the top. So as I'm going towards those edges, if you need to, you can pick up or towards those exterior um, areas, you can pick up a touch of brown if you want to and that will help it to um, kind of disappear into the black. These colors will be a little bit lighter when they're wet as opposed to when they're dry. So just know if your paint is a little bit on the brighter side when it's wet, just give it a minute and um, it will, you know, see if you like it when it's dry. I think I want this to be a touch lighter in through um, this down the center area. So I'm going to add a bit more um, yellow and rust and maybe a tiny touch of white as well just to get this to be a little bit lighter for me and when you're doing a step like this one of my best tips again is don't ever use a ton of paint on your brush because you can always continue to add these little layers to it if you again pick up uh, a whole bunch of paint and then um, try to work it in there, it what ends up happening is it may end up all turning into the same color because you you might end up over blending it if you have a lot of paint on your brush. So I just use a little bit at a time and if I run into trouble I can always bring some of that black back like I feel like this edge needs a little bit of finessing with the black so I just picked up a touch of black just to get it to blend in along the edges and then once you feel like you've got a good um, assembly here. You can see that I 
maintained a nice dark area within that center. Right now I'm just kind of making sure that it, it blends as much as I want it to. Um, once you once you feel like you've got that colored part as um, as colored as you'd like, <laughs> we're gonna add what I'm gonna call like the haze on top of the um, eye, which is gonna give it that three-dimensional appearance. So it's really just the glossy part on the outside of the eye. So I just washed my brush and I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of gray. So I have the gray that I used on the zipper and on the shirt and my small brush and I'm gonna water it down a little bit. So it's really translucent or see-through. And then I'm gonna start up towards the upper right-hand side of this eye, and I'm just gonna keep adding water to my equation and just get this to blend into the rest of the eye. And if you find that you go too dark or you've got, um, or too, too bright, I should say, you can always pick back up a little bit of the black and just get it to blend right in. And you can see we've got it coming right over some of that colored part and just blending right up into this, this upper region. And sometimes a little bit more firmer of a brush will help you to move this paint around while it is still wet. But I've got my, my nice, glaze of sorts on top of that. Now I'm gonna add my sparkle. So I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I picked up a little bit of white and I'm gonna have this, I want the light to look like it's coming up from above a little bit. So I'm gonna give this kind of a triangular shape. It's gonna have a little bit of a curve over on this right hand side, just to kind of show the shape of the eye. And you can see I'm staying away from the um, right edge of my of my eye, and then I'm just going to pull this out in kind of a triangular type shape. Reflections in eyes or twinkles in eyes can really be in any shape that you want them to be because they're reflecting something that us as the viewer can't really see. So you can really have it be whatever you want it to, but as you're doing it, you want it to kind of speak to the contour of that eye, just to the shape of the eye. And then once I've got that in, I just start finessing um, any of the other areas around it. Like I feel like I want this little corner to be a bit darker. We're gonna add all the little pieces of fur around the eye in, in a future step. So just know that um, right now you just work on getting that interior part of the eye the way that you want it. Step back from it if you have to, look at it from a distance. And then we're gonna be using our, let's use our our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this all done, you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're adding what I'm gonna call the highlights to the fur. This isn't gonna be the fine-tuned detail that we'll do at the end with all the little individual pieces of fur. This is in essence just finishing that base layer of the fur or the, the second step to the fur where we did the shadowy areas in through here. Now we're coming back and putting what are gonna be the lighter sections of the, of the fur. So I'm using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use that original um, tan kind of color that we made and I'm gonna lighten it a couple of shades plus white. So I took that original tan color and I added yellow and white to it to make it into a lighter, think of this as like blonde kind of hair. And then I went in shade even lighter than that and then I'll use white. So I just took that, added some white to it and got it to be a little bit lighter and then I'll use white. So if I also need to, if I run into trouble, I can always go back into that original color and some rust and some brown if I need to, if I find that I um, do anything of sorts that is too light for my liking. But my lighter areas are going to be on the nose, in through this little muzzle area, and I need it to blend in with the rest of the head. I'm gonna have some really light pieces around the eye 
And then of course, whatever I do in through here and in through here has to kind of blend into where we deemed as the darker areas. So I'll be overlapping some of those colors in through there. I'm gonna have a little bit of a lighter spot in through here to show that there's like a little poofy piece of skin or something in through here. And then of course, I've got my arm that's gonna have some light fur on it and I'll have some light pieces of fur that kind of um, are in between here and here. So I like to just kind of start at one end and work my way to the other end. And I usually start um, at the hair the, or fur to me that would be underneath and work my way towards the top hair. So for me, I'm gonna start at the bottom and just kind of work my way up. So I know, oops, I know that I used um, this original color in through here. So I'm gonna use a little bit of that plus my next shade lighter that I made, that little bit of a tan color. And of course, I'm going to be not using a lot of paint and I'm always going to be overlapping these colors into one another so they look like they belong with one another. So in through here is where I'm gonna have that arm. So I definitely want some lighter fur on the top of this arm. So something like this. And you can hear I'm working with a really dry brush right now. I really like to work with a dry brush when it comes to fur because that helps me to get those individual pieces, especially with the, with the style of brush that I like to use. And then of course, you can continue to just kind of work your way up and through here. I'm picking up some of my um, lighter color with maybe a little bit of that brown to just get these, these um, pieces of fur to look like they belong together. I think I need a little bit more down in through here because I feel like I've got some, some gaps that I wanna cover. So just picking up some of the original um, browns plus that little bit of a lighter shade that was on my brush and typically when I'm doing fur especially on um, a layer such as this I'm not going to wash my brush unless I run into trouble if I find that I run into trouble then I will definitely um, start you know I would have to wash and dry my brush if I needed to but right now I'm just kind of making sure that I've got some stuff going on over around those edges and I'm just kind of working my way up my little animal here oh he's gonna be so cute I like putting these these lighter layers on it's when everything starts to come to life and again I'm watching the direction of my fur I want it to make sense I want it to look like this fur is talking to this fur and it's also talking to the fur on the arm so I want it to all just kind of make sense so I'm using that lighter tone plus you know a little bit maybe I go a little bit into that rust because I'm, I'm working my way up to this rust area or the burnt sienna so just making sure those look like they belong together and then I've got this little arm in through here I think I might put a tiny bit of lighter my, that lighter version that I had on my palette so that's not, I'm not working with white yet, just kind of using this, this lighter version just to make sure that this is elevated as bright as I want it. And you can always turn it into a different color. If you wanted yours to be more on the, um, you know, orangey side, you could certainly add some of um, red and yellow together. That would make a nice orange color if you wanted to. But you know, just have fun. If you want it to look super long, you can have these really long kind of brush strokes that are gonna make that fur look even longer. I'm gonna work my way up in through here just to make sure this all this fur in through here is gonna talk with the lighter version that I'm about to add in through here. And again, I'm not washing my brush. I'm just kind of adding these bits of um, color on top of that original shade that we had put. I think I want it a little bit lighter over here uh, as it's coming off the edge of the um, animal in through here. And we put this little dark area in through here. So we have a little dip in the um, underside of that of the chin and so I'm gonna just start to work my way into here so again you can kind of work your way gradually into the lighter color I'm that's exactly what I'm doing if I see that I have some rust color in through here and I want to transition into this lighter color you can 
go, you know, a rust and then pick up some of that me medium tone and just work your way into that, into the lighter area. And then I'm working my way into, into the face here. So I'm going to just go ahead and pick up some of that medium color and start to work my way into the face and getting these colors to look like they belong with each other. So again, I'm doing it in the same brush stroke that I did originally. I'm using the skinny side of my of my bristle brush as opposed to if I use the flat side, I'd have a big wide um, appearance like that. So I'm really just kind of using the the tip of my of the skinny side of my brush and just kind of bringing it in the direction that I want. And again, I'm not using much paint at all except for in that one spot that I showed you <laughs> was the way not to do it. And then I'm gonna just kind of bring all of this up in through here, making sure that I've got it in through that little face area. And I'm gonna get it a little bit lighter in a second, but I'm just kind of get, giving it this layer right now so I can, so I can have something on top of the um, original color that we put there. That's not too, too light. Yeah, there we go. Got that in through there. And again, I'm just kind of putting it in the direction that I feel this fur would go. I feel it would be a little bit softer on the nose, so I'm just kind of tapping it with my brush. Um, but I want up here, it's gonna be a little bit darker, so I'm gonna work my way towards the light. I'm putting some of this medium tone on my brush right now just to kind of overlap some of the darker stuff that we had already put on top of the head. And I do want it to look a little on the fluffy side, so I'm extending some of this fur a little bit farther than um, the actual um, outline that we had done for the head. And I can even put some little bits of pieces back in through here. And again, we're gonna be adding the um, the detailed kind of pieces of fur in a little bit as well. But this is right now is just kind of getting us um, into the full, fully covered um, look of the animal. And I'm just kind of adding a bit more in through here. I feel like I have a lot of paint on my brush right now, so I'm just gonna wipe it off on my paper towel. And I'm just gonna kind of keep adding these little bits of um, fur on top of the head. And you can see I'm really concentrating. I'm making sure I'm going in the correct direction. Maybe I've got a couple of little pieces flicking out over on this ear and through here. And I just have that little front part of the muzzle. And as you kind of come along this edge in through here, you want to really start to soften it, soften it so it doesn't look like we had a big pencil outline around there. Um, and you can even bump out some areas a little bit more than others so it doesn't look like it was a perfect circle. So you can certainly um, have fun with, with doing that kind of stuff as well so it doesn't look too, too organized along that edge. And then my main goal on this step is really just to make sure that I have a full second coat on the entire on the entire um, face and on the entire body, whether it be lighter or darker than that original tone or or some of the original tone, just something that gives us that really nice second layer. So it's gonna look nice and complete by the time we're, oh, we're done with it. But right now I'm still using this big brush. So I am getting these bigger kind of sections of, um, of fur. We are gonna utilize a, a smaller brush to get the, the littler details. But you can see I am at this point kind of pulling out some of this fur in front of the ears. And that way that's gonna help us to, to get those um, a really nice realistic look to it. So I'm going ahead and I'm starting to get a little bit lighter on my brush to get this, this nose um, area to get a little bit lighter. This is gonna be where I'm gonna use that lightest tone that I created. Um, right now I'm just working my way to it because I don't wanna go into it too fast. And to me, when I was looking at these little guys, it, they really kind of have a distinct um, front nose area. So, or this like this area in through here. So I really want to make sure that I accentuate it, it with a little bit lighter of, um, of fur. I'm going to kind of dot this along the nose in through here. I, we're going to be, at, again, adding more details to it in a little bit, but I just want to get this kind of started so we have a good um, 
texture to it and have um, this all this cute fur just going in the correct direction and now I'm just going back to that um, brush stroke kind of kind of step to it and then for the next step we're actually going to be using both our small brush and our medium brush so once you've got this again refer to it as the highlighted layer of your fur on here you can put this large brush away and of course you can sit here and fiddle with it all you want and get it to be as fluffy looking as you want but we will again have that additional step which will help to um, get these individual pieces to, to pop out oh I think I want a little white on it too I think I mentioned that I was going to do a little bit of white I think I definitely want a little bit of white in through here and in through here maybe a little bit on this nose and just kind of bl blend that out so it looks like it belongs and again you can really elevate these sections like the nose or the the top of the head with whatever bright intensity that you want you just want it to kind of make it look like it makes sense like I know that the where the eye is going to be on the other side so I want to kind of make this look like it's you know transitioning over at the same kind of playing field um, and then again we'll we'll finesse it much more with our small and our medium brushes so once you've got this this section done you can put this I'm gonna have a hard time stopping you're gonna put this large brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our fur. So this is gonna be all the little finessing details um, to make it really three-dimensional. We have, um, we still have our whiskers to do, but we'll do that in, in a, another step. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush as well as my small brush. Um, I'm in essence gonna kind of be doing the same thing that I did in the previous two steps for the fur, which with this bristle brush, which is bringing out um, more individual pieces. But when I get to the singular pieces along like the edge of the ear and maybe some up and through here, I'll be using this smaller brush so I can get more really individual type pieces. I can do pretty well with this brush in getting um, the the strands to kind of separate and make it look really natural, but this will be the brush where I can get those little squiggly pieces along the edges. So I'm gonna start with this brush, and I, in essence, am looking for areas that I want to come out along the edges, make sure I have highlights as bright as I want them to be, uh, make sure that I'm not missing any spots, like right here looks to me like it's unpainted, I want to put a light, almost outline around the ear with a little bit of lighter fur. And I really just want to make sure that I have enough around the eyes so they look like they're really um, finished and complete. And then same thing with the face. So again, I'm, I'm, I think I'm just going to kind of start at the bottom and work my way up. I might kind of float around a little bit, but those are my main thought process or that's my main thought process to to complete it is make sure that everything is painted and I've got little strands coming out along outside of the sweatshirt where I think that they would work that I have a good edge to my ear so that kind of pops out and that um, everything really has enough pieces of hair or fur to make it look like it's um, nice and natural so I'm going to start at the bottom so in other words I'm going to use all of my fur colors <laughs> plus maybe some added custom colors, but whatever I use, I will, I'll let you know. Um, so I'm gonna start at the bottom. I feel like I need a little bit more kind of um, fluffing out over over this this edge in through here. So I'm using some of my dark, my dark original colors and just kind of using the corner of my brush to make sure that I've got everything in through here that I want. And when you're doing fur, if you want it to look like there's some good dimension to it, you can bring the fur out in a little bit different of a direction. It doesn't always have to go in the same exact curve. If you want to see some of those pieces, especially if you've got wavy hair or um, 
fur that has length to it, if you bring a couple of pieces out in a little bit different of a direction, that's gonna show the um, that it's got volume to it. Um, I wanna come back down in through here, make sure that I've got everything painted down in through here. I think I wanna go a little bit darker just cause I feel like this should be in, in the shadows or in, in the shade a little bit down here. I have a little bit of white uh, or lighter color on my brush with it, which I don't really want. So I just wiped my brush off real quick and just making sure that all of this down in through here is finished. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna come to a spot where you're like, oh, I can still see my canvas underneath there. So that's when you just make sure that you've got as much painted as you want to, you know, just kind of finesse it a little bit more using those original colors to make sure that everything is painted. And then as I work my way up, making sure all of the, the pieces of fur are talking to one another. You know, you don't wanna just have a light section that doesn't transition into the dark section. They've, they've gotta, at some point, transition somehow. So how do you make them do that? And the way to do that is to make sure that they kind of overlap with one another. So that's what I'm doing in through here is just making sure I see some bald spots on my canvas. So I'm just kind of overlapping those those colors a bit. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly the same color that I did the first time. I could use it a little bit lighter or darker and that's gonna show those um, those little pockets of highlights throughout the, throughout the fur. So I'm gonna add a little bit more lightness to it in through here and you can see this is bringing these cute little dimensional pieces out and through there. Working my way up in through here just with a little bit lighter we've got going on just making sure that all of this talks to talks to it, each other. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit lighter in through here. Yeah, I get that nice volume on the on the cute little leg into here. And again, if you want to add different colors or some with the original um, tone or even add a bit of a more of an orange color to it or a, you know, a, a rusty tone to it, feel free to do so. It's it's your guinea pig. You can make it look as whatever color you want. Again, they come in so many different colors, so you can certainly have fun with it. And I'm just making sure that this kind of transitions nicely into the arm. Oh my God, he's so cute. And that it kind of goes back up in through here. See, I'm just trying to make all of this fur just talk to each other. And I'm using a smaller brush this time. I'm gonna head over to the ear now. I'll come back to here in a minute, but this ear is calling me. I'm using um, this smaller brush because it's gonna, it's giving me a bit more control um, with these littler pieces of fur that I want to be um, used to accentuate some of these areas of the of the of the animal, and it's giving me the same idea or process as I was using with the larger brush, but I have more control because it is. A smaller a smaller brush that I'm using so you certainly can um, find where your comfort zone is I'm using um, again not much paint on my brush you just using kind of the corner of my brush and then I will go ahead and just start adding as much more um, fur as I want everywhere else I think I want a little bit more back in through this area maybe a little bit more of that rusty color just to give this a little bit more, yeah, a little, little more, a little more oomph and color back in through here. And again, you can flick it out. I'm gonna have a little bit coming over this head in through here. And again, have fun with these colors. Make them into whatever you'd imagined or dreamt your little cute guinea pig color could be. I'm gonna put a couple of darker pieces up in through here just to. I think it looks neat how the, the darkness over on this side. And I'm gonna add a couple of tiny pieces with the small brush as well. Um, but first I'm just kind of getting the rest of um, these little pieces in as much as I want. Maybe a couple of cute, cute pieces in through here. Get a couple to flick up around that ear. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I like the little tiny pieces. I'll add more in a minute with my small brush, but this is this is this gets it gets it started in a nice fluffy way for me. And then let's see. All right. So that's enough around the ear, I think. 
that works for me. Um, so I'm going to move down into here, just making sure that I've got this, this um, neck area nice and finished. So maybe a little bit more fluff coming out over in through here. And again, I'm not really, um, I'm, I want to call out the colors that I'm using, but I'm really just kind of um, alternating the all of the fur colors that I use. So I've got my light blonde kind of color that I'm using as my as my highlight little tips. I've got that rusty color that I used quite a bit um, for that that um, almost reddish tones that I wanted in through there. Now I'm just using um, that a bit of that blondish kind of color to add these little pieces on top of the on top of the other ones right around this area you can see it's adding quite a bit of fluff you can use a little bit of white if you want to add even more little um, pops of brightness to the edges you could add you know a little bit in through here if you wanted to so you can have again have as much fun as you want you could even go with a little bit more yellow in it and then I'm just kind of making sure again that I've got all of these areas with enough enough fur on them so they look complete and that they have enough dimension to it so I can feel that the fur has thickness to it as opposed to it just being one solid um, you know layer of sorts. I just added a bit of the brown and the rust to my to my brush just to make sure that I've got I don't feel like I have enough um, detail in through here so I'm just kind of playing with that a bit and I'm moving into the lighter tones of course to finish up yeah there we go now we've got now we're talking and just moving my way into this little face again you can see my my brush strokes are almost getting smaller and smaller as I'm coming towards these um, brighter areas just to get these little pieces of fur to just kind of show themselves and, and get them to um, add that extra bit of dimension to it. Oh, he's so cute. And again, you can just add it in a bit of a more of a curve so you can see, you know, the, the difference between one area to the next, even if you're using, you know, a similar color, if you want there to look like there's a bit more fur um, or texture to it, just put that those little pieces in a bit different of a direction. Again, they don't all have to go in exactly the same direction, um, but in a similar direction lets the viewer know what way they're coming out, but if you can lay them over um, and kind of cross them over one another, that makes a little bit of a difference. And now I'm going to add some um, bits of ones around these eyes and I'm almost done here. I just got a little a couple more little highlights to go and little tiny squiggly pieces that I'll, I'll fly through with my tiny brush which is always such a fun thing to do. Oh maybe I need a little bit a little bit of um, direction on these these little pieces in through here too. So I just added a bit of brown to my brush just to make sure that this looks good in through here. And if you wanted to, you could also add a bit of red or pink around that nose a bit. So you could go a little bit of red and white. I don't want it to go too, too much. You could even pick up some of that maroon color if you wanted to. Just add a bit of, um, a bit of pinkness to that nose. Nothing major, just something that will speak to a little bit of a, of a pink kind of, you know, skin on the nose. And then you can just kind of finesse it just make sure that it it makes sense with the rest of the stuff around it so I just kind of added a bit more of the other colors and then just I'm using my small brush right now just kind of dotting and adding some texture in through here some of my lighter colors and white and this will get this all to kind of talk together I want to make sure that the edge around here is nice and soft and fluffy so you can continue to add those light colors maybe a little bit of white as well just to get these little fluffs along the edges and just make sure that you know the whole area just kind of talks to each other and you can see I didn't do much for my for my nostrils just kind of kept them on there and I'm going to use my tiny brush for a second here I'm going to 
I'm gonna switch brushes to my tiny brush for just a second to get those really little tiny squiggly pieces or longer pieces. So I'm just going to that tiny brush. And this can be little um, pieces along the ears. You can just kind of add these individual pieces. Sometimes when you're doing this, a little water on your brush is gonna help you to um, get even more, you know, just little squirrely pieces coming out. And I'm just having fun. I'm using my lighter tones that I had created and just making these individual little pieces coming out. Again, a little water would help to um, get them to go in the directions that you wanted. You could certainly add a whole bunch coming off of the, the ear back here. So anywhere that you wanted little tiny pieces to, to come out, feel free to do so. The lighter they are, the more that they're gonna stand out, obviously. And this is just gonna be a visual preference on your part. If you want, if you want a ton of them, add a ton of them. If you want just a, a few of them, just add a few of them. Just enjoy the process. I'm gonna have a couple of little squiggly ones coming out by that ear to make it look, and they can be light or dark or skinny or wide, whatever works for you. I like the to have to incorporate some of the little darker pieces because that shows some good dimension in through there. And then we are going to be using the same small brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your little pieces of fur finessed as much as you want them to be, you can wash and dry. I just want a couple more, little more pieces around this eye. You can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our string on our sweatshirt or the tassel, whatever you'd like it to call it. So I'm just gonna have one on the right hand side. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using red, yellow, white, and black is how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna start with red and yellow on my brush at the same time. This is gonna make my red a bit more brighter, especially since it's gonna be on top of such a dark surface. So I'm gonna just have mine coming somewhere over from this right hand side and it's just a, a string so it can be as um, wobbly I guess as you want it or as straight as you want it. I know that um, when my son had his um, sweatshirts as a kid he used to um, gnaw on the string <laughs> so it was always all wiggly and kind of um, in a in an unusual shape. So you can certainly have yours whatever way that you want it. And once I've got it on there, I'm just gonna make a little bump somewhere near the bottom, just a little bit. This is gonna be the knotted part of it. And then once you've got the um, it in the position that you want, I'm just gonna um, wash and dry my brush real quick. And I'm gonna add a little bit of black and red to my brush, and this is gonna add the shadow to it. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow on this right-hand side, and maybe I skip a little bit up there, and maybe I'll put a little bit down in through here, because maybe it's away from the shirt a little bit. Again, black and red are the colors I'm using here. I'll put a little shadow underneath here, and then maybe just a little shadow down here. And if you felt you needed a little shadow somewhere else, feel free to put it. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And I'm gonna put a little bit of a highlight, so to speak. So red, yellow, and white is gonna be the highlight. So they're all three on my brush at the same time. And I'm just gonna kind of elevate a little bit of this color just in a couple of spots. I don't need to do much to it, something like this. And then you can just blend it in a little bit if you want to, or leave it as is, whatever your visual preference is. It might turn a little bit, the whole thing might turn a little bit darker on you as it dries. So if it doesn't get as vibrant as you want, you can always come back through with another layer once it's dry, or even make your shadow a little bit darker along the sides, whatever works to make it pop out, or maybe you just keep it a nice subtle, um, little detail as we have it. And then we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So when you've got your little string on here, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our whiskers. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm using are brown, rust, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is, first I'm gonna put the little whisker holes where the, where the whiskers are gonna come out in place, and then we'll paint the whiskers themselves. So I'm gonna be using a little rust and brown on my brush at the same time to decide where I want my whisker holes. And I like to do them messy. Um, you could certainly do yours much more organized than mine, but mine are gonna be really messy. They're gonna be small as they're closer to the um, mouth area, and I'm gonna get them to be a little bit bigger as they come away from um, the mouth area. So I'm really just kind of doing these little like dark polka dots in a kind of a chaotic fashion. And if you feel that you made them too big or too um, noticeable, like too circular or they're just um, don't look natural, you can always pick up some of your original fur color and just do little pieces of fur around them. So I'm putting them in a direction of where the um, fur is going and I'm just kind of picking some little dark spots to put them to put them in. And again, I'm not doing anything really fancy here, just kind of giving myself some spots where I can have those whiskers kind of coming out. Maybe I'll put a couple little tiny ones over on this side. And then what I'm gonna do, once I've got as many little whisker spots as I want, I'm gonna wash and dry my small brush and I'm gonna make myself a light yellow color. So I'm gonna take some of my white and I'm gonna mix some yellow in it. I'm just looking for something that's not totally white. Um, so taking my white and adding this yellow mixture I know that it's not gonna compete with any of my other fur colors. I want you to be able to see these whiskers on top of my other fur. So if I was just to choose one of my lighter fur colors, or even white for that matter, white of course you would see, but it might not look as natural. So what I'm doing is I'm choosing to make myself a light color that is not any one that I made for the, um, for the rest of the, of the animal. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm adding a touch of water into it so it's very fluid and I have a nice ink type consistency to it. And then once I have it as thin as I want, I take my brush in my paint and I spin it on the side of my palette so I have a nice pointy brush. And then when I go to do these, I don't hold my brush tight. I want them to have a long, uh, kind of a curved type look to them and I'm gonna try not to push on my canvas too hard so I don't have very huge um, pieces of whiskers. And they're gonna come out at different directions too. So I'm gonna start over on this right hand side and I'm gonna just kind of start slowly. Once I get my rhythm, I go faster, but initially I kind of start on the slower side. There we go, I got one down. And then as you, as you pull it away from um, your canvas, if you lift off on your pressure, that's gonna help you to get these um, skinnier kind of lines, something like that. And I've got them coming out all throughout this area. <laughs> Sometimes I, I miss fire because I don't wanna push so hard, so I come out at a, a little bit of a, um, I'm a little hesitant as I come out on some of them. Here we go. I'm almost getting my rhythm here. It always takes me a minute on these, um, on whiskers. And if you end up doing one that you're not totally sold on, you can always um, take, sometimes if it's still pliable enough, you could take a little bit of water and you could almost thin it out or you just take the color that's next to it. Like you could take some of that original t-shirt or sweatshirt collar and just kind of thin it out that way. So you can thin them out in a couple of different ways. I do feel that I um, was a little aggressive on the face here, so I'm just taking some of my fur color and just kind of dotting it over some of the edges of those whiskers. And then I'll go ahead and I'll come and do some on this left-hand side. So of course you want them to um, come out of some of your whisker holes, but they don't necessarily always just have to come out of a whisker hole. You might not see every single whisker hole. So maybe I've got some coming down in through here 
And again, because I'm using a little bit more yellow of a color than I used on my other um, fur, you'll be able to see these in front of my other fur. And if you were doing it and, and you're not able to detect them, they're too similar to your fur color, you can just adjust that accordingly. And then of course, I'm gonna do a couple coming in through here and I've got them coming in all different kind of directions They and they're different lengths. So you ha can have fun with your whiskers. I think I've almost got as many on here as I want. And of course, you know, I'm not terribly concerned if they're coming out of every single whisker hole that I created, but I am put, trying to put quite a few on here so they're evident and you can and you can see them and they can be longer ones and shorter ones. I think I want I think I want some up in through here too. Something like this. Yeah, there we go. A couple more on this side. Excellent. And then we have one little tiny step left to go. So once you've got all of your whiskers in here, he's so cute. Um, you can, we're going to use this small brush for the next step. So you can just wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna use my small brush. I am using black paint. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you would like for your identifying mark to be is totally up to you. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really super adorable little rodent. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>